Is this true? Recently, the United States has once again updated its ban on the Chinese chip industry, precisely restricting the DCO value of lithography machines. This time, the U.S. ban on the Chinese chip industry has been updated again, targeting lithography machines with more precise goals. The use of immersion lithography machines with a 193 nanometers wavelength and a resolution of less than 40 nanometers should not have a DCO value of less than 2.4. This requirement will directly impact ASML's immersion lithography machines. Because the currently available immersion lithography machines have a DCO value of less than 2.4, they cannot be sold according to this ban. It is widely believed in the industry that without EUV lithography machines, it is necessary to use immersion lithography machines and multiple exposures to produce 7 nanometers chips. It is impossible to achieve 7 nanometers with ordinary non-immersion lithography machines. Therefore, the target of this ban is very clear. Among all the immersion lithography machines currently available from ASML, the relatively most outdated model is the NXT 1980D, with a wavelength of 193 nanometers, a resolution of 38 nanometers, and a DCO value of 1.6, between 1.5 and 2.4. According to last year's ban, a DCO value of 1.6 is greater than 1.5, so it can be sold. According to this upgraded ban, with a DCO value of less than 2.4, it cannot be sold, which means that all of ASML's immersion lithography machines cannot be sold to mainland China. As we all know, the recent release of the Huawei Kirin 9000S chip led many to believe that China has the capability to manufacture 7 nanometers chips. According to foreign media reports, using electron microscopes to scan and reverse analyze this chip, it was found that its transistor density is approximately 98 mtr mm2, which is about 98 million per square millimeter similar to TSMC's 7 nanometers process. Huawei does not have EUV lithography machines, so how did they produce this chip that is equivalent to 7 nm? Experts speculate that it may have been created using immersion lithography machines and multiple exposure techniques. Previously, ASML could sell immersion lithography machines to China, as ASML could only not sell EUV machines to China. Therefore, China could use immersion lithography machines for multiple exposures to ultimately achieve 7 nanometers. Strictly speaking, for the United States, this type of immersion lithography machine is actually considered a loophole, so. The United States has finally taken action again to close this loophole, leaving no room for China to use immersion lithography machines and multiple exposure techniques to produce 7 nanometers chips, thereby preventing the emergence of chips like the Kirin 9000S. However, it is clear that these immersion lithography machines were not restricted before, so China certainly has purchased many of them, and there should not be too many issues in the short term regarding their continued use, the question arises. Due to the restrictions imposed, once all immersion lithography machines are restricted, subsequent maintenance, upkeep, and replacement of parts will be affected. Of particular concern is whether the Kirin 9000S chip will be restricted and affected. For the time being, the likelihood is not great. After all, before the ban was enforced, Huawei had already purchased a large number of immersion lithography machines so production capacity should not be greatly affected. However, the core issue still lies in the independent development of lithography machines. Only when China achieves a breakthrough in developing its own lithography machines can the problem be truly resolved. Indeed, the United States has once again upgraded its ban on the Chinese chip industry, presenting more specific restrictions in the field of lithography machines. This is undoubtedly a severe blow to China's chip manufacturing industry. Why is that? Oh, firstly, 
The restrictions on immersion lithography machines directly impact the production capacity of Chinese chip manufacturers. In the absence of EUV lithography machines, immersion lithography machines are crucial equipment for manufacturing 7 nanometers and below process chips. Therefore, restricting the use of immersion lithography machines will undoubtedly limit the production of Chinese chip manufacturers, severely impacting the development of related industries. Secondly, the upgraded sanctions from the United States will also create technological barriers for the Chinese chip industry. As the core equipment for the next generation of advanced microelectronic processes, EUV lithography machines are still in a monopolistic position globally. Sanctions from countries like the United States will prevent Chinese chip manufacturing companies from obtaining the latest EUV lithography machine technology, further widening the gap between the Chinese chip industry and the international advanced level. Additionally, the upgraded sanctions from the United States also pose a challenge to the independent innovation capability of the Chinese chip industry. Excessive reliance on imported equipment will keep the Chinese chip industry in a weak position of technological control, making independent innovation difficult. In the current context of fierce global semiconductor industry competition, independent innovation has become crucial for the development of the Chinese chip industry. However, the sanctions have brought difficulties and obstacles to China's independent innovation. In summary, the impact of the United States upgraded sanctions on the Chinese chip industry cannot be ignored. This is a severe test for Chinese chip manufacturers and underscores the weaknesses in critical technologies within the Chinese chip industry. Faced with the challenge of sanctions, the Chinese chip industry needs to strengthen independent innovation, promote technological breakthroughs, and achieve independent and controllable industry development. Facing the upgraded sanctions from the United States, the Chinese chip industry needs to seek a new path for development, breaking free from external technological dependencies to achieve independent and controllable industry. Firstly, the Chinese chip industry needs to intensify its efforts in independent research and development. By vigorously supporting research institutions and enterprises to increase R&D investment, nurturing and attracting high-end talent, and promoting independent innovation. Only through independent research and development can the industry break free from reliance on imported equipment, enhance technological capabilities, and overcome technological barriers. Secondly, the Chinese chip industry needs to strengthen cooperation and exchanges. By collaborating with chip industries in other countries and regions, sharing resources and technology, and promoting the synergistic development of the industry. At the same time, enhancing international standardization and regulatory exchange and cooperation to jointly promote the development of the chip industry with the international community. Additionally, the Chinese chip industry needs to strengthen the research and production of key equipment and materials. Lithography machines, EUV technology, advanced materials, etc., are crucial in chip manufacturing. The Chinese chip industry needs to increase research and investment in these key technologies and equipment, enhance independent supply capabilities, and reduce reliance on imports. If dependent on others' equipment, the United States can continue to upgrade restriction measures increasing the constraints, ultimately achieving the goal of locking down the Chinese chip industry. Only when China has independent R&D capabilities can it break free from these constraints and stand undefeated. Lastly, the Chinese chip industry also needs to strengthen government support and policy guidance. The government can provide strong support and protection for the industry through the formulation of preferential policies, funding support, and strengthening intellectual property protection, laying a solid foundation for industry development. Overall, in the face of U.S. sanctions, the Chinese chip industry needs to remain confident, seize opportunities, and actively seek new development paths. 
through independent R&D, enhanced cooperation and exchanges, strengthening the research and production of key equipment and materials, and government support and policy guidance, the Chinese chip industry is expected to break free from external technological dependencies and achieve long-term sustainable development. development.